Good afternoon, Danielle. Um, we have another one of our guests with us today for our podcast. And Danielle will give us a, a brief introduction about herself. But before we do that, I'd just like to let you know if you're coming to these podcasts for the first time. My name is Paul Waters from the International Institute of Live Events, set up primarily to impart knowledge and information to students and recent graduates who are looking to either change their career path, be inspired by people who have um, graduated from university or about to graduate and show them a route to get access to the industry that they love. So Danielle is a recent, I say recent, several years now graduated from Backstage Academy in Wakefield, had a franchise license with Bolton University to for them to deliver degree courses. And she studied on one of those degree courses, which she'll give you some information about, as well as a background about herself. So, Danielle, please tell the listeners something about yourself. Oh, thank you for that, Paul. Um, yes, yeah, so my name is Danielle. I'm, I've been working in the industry for about uh, 10 years now and graduated in um, 2018. Um, currently, my role in the industry is a front of house manager and events and hire coordinator at Cornerstone Art Centre in South Oxfordshire. Right. So, prior to you starting university, a backstage academy, um, what what were you doing that inspired you to go into that role or to go into that area of education? Um, so. My first um, introduction to the um, live events industry was actually working as a performer. Um, I have a background in um, uh, competitive and professional figure skating. So after um, when I was about 19, 20 years old, finished competing, I went to do some professional shows and worked on some um, uh, quite large productions uh, in, in Europe and uh, the Far East, which kind of triggered my um sort of um passion for wanting to know a bit more about how events are produced and going to um the production side of events rather than performing right so i was interested to hear and i'm sure others were that you were a figure skater so did you say professional uh yeah so up until i was um like i say i think i was 19 20 i was competing in um in competitions and national and um I, I also trained um in the states for three years so figure skating was really my life for the first 20 years of it um and then a sort of a, a natural thing for comp competitors to to do after competing is is to work on these professional shows um and i worked in a theme park in uh, germany for a year in their ice show and it's it's sort of like Alton Towers, so they have obviously the big rides, but they also have a lot of um, of, of shows, uh, including our show, um, variety acts, jugglers, high diving. Um, I think at the time when I was there, Europa Park was the second most popular theme park in in Europe. So they were quite big budget things that we were working on, and uh, but yeah, that sparked my interest. Right. So you what? So you you won medals and trophies uh, yeah uh, so yeah I was two-time um British solo ice dance champion in my in my younger years <laughs> well done well done <laughs> right so so with that sparkling career behind you you decided to go into stage management is that correct uh yeah so initially I I didn't really know much about production and after I came back from um um a show well well Europa Park and then I, I worked on a small show at um the Grand Prix in Bahrain in 2015 and I did actually injure myself that year and I thought well maybe now is the time that I can start to learn a new career but still be involved in events and, and the arts. And I um I joined my local um little theatre which is predominantly um all volunteers that work there and they produced um, I think nine shows a year as well as in-house things and I just 
sort of stumbled across Backstage Academy and I thought oh maybe that's where I can start some formal education in this and then I started later that year in 2015. Right so you said I mean that, that's it's good in one sense like you said you 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 had a an active professional career prior to arriving at Backstage which like I said is sometimes quite unusual to find somebody as young as that and competitive and also um, as achieve what you did achieve in, in, in it figure skating or ice skating? Um, so I was um, mostly an ice dancer, but it is all dance. the same umbrella. All the same. Really. <laughs> right. I didn't. I didn't want to miscategorize, but you did. <laughs> so yeah, yes. So, and like you said, having a chance to work in your local theatre, um, where they produced their own their own plays. Did they do any tour, Steve? Any touring productions, or was it all in house? Um, not like theatre productions. I think they had like tribute bands and, and such. But um, yeah, all of the plays that they produced were all produced by uh, volunteers, really. It's just like, a, you know, Amdram Society. Right. But they also um, ran the theatre as well. Um, so they were very busy people. <laughs> so that gave you the burning desire to go forward and yeah. look, you know, or give you the spark for a career in stage management, stage management. Yes, they, yeah. So the three year course that you took, a degree in stage management, what were your expectations for joining the course in terms of what did you expect to get from it? Um, were you looking at a, a potential career in that area based on what you've already experienced prior to arriving and what you learnt? Or did you look at any other area that you'd like to go into? What was your what was your drop with your main ambition when you started the course? That's a good question. Um, because I already had a career and I was starting as a, a mature student at 21, um, I I think I, I knew I definitely wanted to work in that backstage production area, but probably at the start I wasn't completely sure what stage manager meant, but it can mean so many different things um, depending on what kind of, of show it is. So, I'd, yeah, I think... Um, I had um, not my heart set, but I, I definitely had the um, sort of inkling that I would want to stay in like a theatre sort of environment with um, performers and um, actors. But um, what that role would end, end up as at the end of my degree, I wasn't really sure of, but I just thought I'll be in that right sort of area. <laughs> right. OK. <laughs> so. Let's sort of drill down into the first, second and third year, because you would have done specific modules across that course, some of them you may not remember at this moment in time, but there could have been ones that's, that were quite prominent to you while you were there that you felt really resonated with what you are currently doing now. So is there anything on the course that you did that you felt that, that really has relevance to me? Because what we're trying to ascertain is that a lot of people that attend courses and they come out at the end and they might think to themselves, I, I don't know what what or how this links to what I'm doing now, particularly mm. if I stay in the same area to which I studied. So was there a clear synergy for you? Well, I think I should probably stay, uh, say that uh, I do have a stage management degree and I have worked as a stage manager. I have also done a lot of different roles that I didn't expect that I, I would have been doing whilst I was doing the course. Um, I've done... Um, technical roles I've taught as um yeah touring technician and and relighter and all these things didn't I didn't know existed at the start of the course and they weren't necessarily um covered but um yeah I sort of I guess through work experience along the way um I sort of learned those um but in particular I guess the first year was really um learning about the industry and we did cover a lot of um, uh, traditional theatre stage management type roles. And um, that is obviously what, what I set out to do. Um, I think um, the people that we had, our, our lecturers, um, they were really good at um, sort of showing us um, what what kind of jobs we could do by right? getting, you know, guest speakers in. So I think that really, um, that really helped to... Um, to understand what the role could be at the end of your degree. Um, I would say that's kind of what first year was the overarching theme was about. 
Right. So, so obviously taking a vocational uh, qualification, you mentioned that you did some work while you were studying. So, you you were actively doing work in stage in the area of stage management while you was on the course. Is that that's what you're saying? Yeah. Well, I guess when I say work, like most of these vocational courses, you have to do a lot of stuff for free to learn um, your crafts. So, yeah, I didn't obviously get a paid job right away, but I I did do a lot of things alongside um, throughout the three years um, but mostly in first year I was, I was working with the Andram company in uh, Bingley that really um, helped to I guess take what I'd learned from from the lectures and then put it into a, a, a real life work situation so right. things like for stage managers that's quite um, useful and uh, important is obviously the script uh, and marking up a script, um, I would say that when we covered that in the lectures, uh, that really helped me because when I went then to rehearsals, I knew what I was doing or like I could pick up the script and say, oh, yeah, that's where they want this lighting cue. I, I know what that means. So, right. so yeah. So so could you just elaborate on that? Because like you said, you, you covered a, a module that addressed the script. And like you said, every every show will have a script of some description. And how important uh, was that in the course and how important for you now as you're in the industry? Could you just expand on that in, in more detail? Because some uh, courses may not cover exactly what you just made reference to. Yeah, so in sort of traditional theatre, maybe when you've got a, a, a play or, or maybe a musical and you are the stage manager and you are the one that is calling the cues, that's basically um, the person that will speak to the lighting operator or the sound operator. And if um, you have a flight tower in your theatre, you would be calling the cues to them. And it's making sure that these all happen at precisely the right moment. Um, and often, you know, lighting sound cues happen at the same time, which is why you have a show caller, because um, if these people were just working independently, they, they might be off. But if uh, one person is telling them when to go, that eliminates that. Um, so, yeah, that's what a, a, a deputy stage manager would do on a big production. So for those who may not know fully what your role entails, so would you say that the stage manager, as you know it to be prior to arriving on the course and now since you graduate, the importance of that person in the theatre, particularly within the rehearsals and, and the, the live production? Yeah, definitely. And, I, and I've also operated shows and received cues from the stage manager as well. And having a good stage manager really does, you know, make the production slick as you, as you would. So, so th let's just see if you could extrapolate that knowledge that you have, because just recently we had the Eurovision um, in Liverpool. Did you watch any of it at all? Um, I'm afraid not. <laughs> right. OK, so. I was, was probably that, working. Right. OK. So what, was there any stage production that you watched recently, be a live performance of, a, of a, an artist or a theatre production or um, a TV production that you looked at and thought, I, I can critique this. I can see where things are, are working well, things haven't worked well because I've got my stage manager head on. Um, I think pretty much any show that I see um, I am doing that. <laughs> so tell us one that you've seen recently, either live or on TV, that you looked at it and, and you and you felt that that stage manager head that you've got now came to play. Um, that, that's a good question. Um, so I guess one that comes to mind, um, I, I won't maybe necessarily say, say what it was, but it was uh, one that, I was working on at the venue that I'm in now and you know it's just um, a simple well it would seem simple like a, a an award ceremony for a school um, but without a stage manager at, at this one the technician was working solely by himself mm -hmm. he was operating the sound cues the lighting cues and also projection and it's really hard to get all those um, working simultaneously um especially um when you throw in projection there as well um so yeah we were stage manager 
they could have easily helped to orchestrate all those things working seamlessly without obviously the audience knowing that that all this is going on. The worst thing is when uh, other audience members who are not stage managers start to notice things. Um, so yeah. So things have things have to be pretty bad if you're not a stage manager and you <laughs> notice that things are off. Yeah. So, so 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 owing to the fact that you said this individual was managing quite a number of key roles. Yeah. What can you pick up from that particular um, live performance that you said to yourself, this is really off and they needed a stage manager on that stage? What what, what highlighted it for you? Um, I, I think people, a, a technician, you shouldn't notice them at all. That You will notice a technician only when something is going wrong, I, I would say. Right. So, 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 so when my, my question really was, it is, did did everything go right or was there something that went wrong that you looked at and said they needed help in this performance in this production uh yeah so i think there was there was some problems with the projection um and audience members could tell that there was something going wrong um I don't really want to put the blame on anyone, but um, no. What I'm trying, trying to, to, to yeah, trying to get equipment. to is to make people realise the importance of yeah. your role and your role as a stage manager, be that for a a live performance of a band on stage, or with, like you said, an award ceremony, yeah. or whether you're you're managing a conference in a conference said conference venue. You know, your role crosses so many areas of the live events industry and it's not just theatre driven. And maybe yeah. people might think a stage manager is purely in a theatre role and doesn't really step outside of that. So I just wanted to, to people to have an understanding, have an understanding of how universal your role is and can be. Yeah. And there's so many transferable skills that you learn as a stage manager. I'm not technically a stage manager in, in the role that I do now, but a lot of the um the skills that I've learned along the way through all the different roles did have all sort of come together under the job that I'm doing now which is good <laughs> right okay so going back to the course um you, you said you obviously did um a module looking at uh, scripting and cues and so forth and what year did you what year did you cover that particular? And that area? would have been in our first year, right? And um, so that was like the overarching um, theme of of what a stage manager is in first year. Right. In um, I don't remember a second year <laughs> in okay. particular, but in third year, um, that's when we started to work on uh, bigger events and put our own thing on, you know, events on. And right. there was more of an emphasis on uh, placements, but also our final um, piece of work, uh, which you do in university, which is a thesis or dissertation. Right. So, so let's jump to your final year then, because that probably has more resonance to you. You said you did a live project, correct? Uh, yes. So in third year, we um, we actually worked on um, we put a live event on, but also mm -hmm. we um, sort of wrote a, 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 um, a health and safety document on if we were to write, um, if we were to plan a full festival. Obviously, as students, we didn't plan a full festival, as you know, but um, it was more to get us to learn about all the different suppliers that would come to work on such thing, and considering the health and safety, and, you know, weather risks and, and all that. Um, types of things and that was a big body of work that we worked as a group um to put together right okay and after you did that you did your dissertation yeah and i and i do remember was i your supervisor um not sure possibly right you I, can't, are... I can't remember if i was um but yes from what i remember you graduated with a first correct yeah. And if, and what I do remember, I think you did quite a good dissertation. Um, so the the whole research and writing skills, did that come easy to you? Or is that something that because you, you started as a mature student, you felt you benefited from that? How did that 
pan out for you? Um, that's a good question. I, I definitely remember getting some critiques from you for my dissertation, <laughs> um, but certainly writing, um, writing academically and professionally is um, something that I have taken away from university. I think at the time you don't maybe realise how important it is when you're a student of how to write well. Um, but now, obviously, as a as a manager, have to email clients and you know customers, and being able to write professionally um, is is really obviously uh, useful. Um, I think uh, you know it's quite a practical course, so maybe other students maybe don't realise at the time, but um, even. You know, you might start out as a, a light designer, maybe and you don't have to write anything. But as you progress up the ladder, and then you do start to realise why you need that skill. OK, so your writing skill is, is at a reasonably high level. <laughs> I mean, okay. it's something that you have to practise on. It certainly does yes. come easy to me. Um, right. I needed, you know, um, and, and, and you made a very good point there because you talked earlier on about transferable skills and the skill to be able to communicate and write in as well as verbally is, key, is a key skill for any employer to see in a potential employee. So the fact that you were able to develop that and felt confident enough that you can take that into your workplace and continue to communicate effectively is, is testament to yourself. And, and, and that was really just to get that message across to young people who are going through university and, and about to graduate in the same way you did. So you graduated in 2018. 18. Correct. Yeah. And did you have a clear career path when you graduated and how did it pan out for you? If you'd like to chart um, that for us. I mean, I think you think you do when you, when you graduate. Um, straight out, out of university, um, I'd, I was lucky enough to um, have some uh, paid work lined up for me. Um, I worked as a show caller and assistant stage manager for uh, a few months at the Crystal Maze live experience in Manchester. I did uh, well. Before um, starting a tour as a touring technical stage manager um, for a contemporary dance company, which I started later that year. Right. So, so in doing that, was that an active decision for you to go into those roles or was it you just trying to find something at this early point of leaving university that will get you some money and get you some experience? Yeah, well, for me, um, I was I was conscious that after university, I would I would want to be working straight away because I, I figured I'd be 24 or 25. Um, so I was doing paid work before before finishing, um, but but um, yeah, I think it was one of my tutors at the time that sort of told me about the um, the contemporary dance company were looking to um, to find a stage manager. So that kind of said, okay, and then I'll, I'll apply for that role, and, and I, I did get it, which was it was really good to have that first sort. Of professional tour under my belt as a stage manager that was yeah really. so how long did you stay in that role did you say um so th it was a five or six week tour um mm. so I did the tour with them and then not too long after that um I got a job working as assistant stage manager on a, a large scale pantomime um in Bradford for um, I think it was three months or something it was quite a long run of the pantomime um and that was produced by um I, they have changed their name now but at the time there were kudos pantomimes and that's the largest pantomime country in, in the uk all right so I'm, I'm not sure if this is the case but correct me if i'm if i'm wrong so as a stage manager would you find that continuous employment is difficult to come by or do you find that you you tend to do a lot of freelance because stage productions tend not to run like cats or there's yeah. rather for 10 15 20 years yeah i think it depends um what kind of shows you want to work on um as i explained before i'd already toured as a um 
performer for quite long stints. So I think I was sure that I didn't want to tour long stints as anything else. I kind of had done that. Um, so these small tours were, I was quite content with. And they did, you know, for, for a, a while, they did sort of uh, line up. So one would end and I wouldn't have to wait too long until I'd, I'd started the next thing. Um, so, so yeah, I did the, um, the dance tour not too long after the pantomime started. And then not too long after that, I started a full-time role um, in a theatre. Right. So where are you now in what sort of trajectory? You're what, four or five years out of university? Is that correct? Uh, yeah. So um, are, you, are you on the path where you, you thought you would be? Are you happy with where you are and what you've well, done I so think, far? Um, the pandemic um, mm. did make a lot of people in the industry re rethink what, what they um, maybe do, uh, wanted to do. And some people left the industry completely. But I think the job that I'm doing now maybe wasn't the one I thought I would be doing straight out of university. But equally, it does use all the skills that I've learned from every job that I've done into one role, uh, which um, which I'm really happy with. Right. OK, so is there one specific case study, one specific project that you worked on? that you would like to share with us um, since leaving university that you felt has really brought to bear all the skills and knowledge that you've had prior to starting university while you were at university and skills that you've accumulated. Is there one particular project that you, you're really pleased with that you could share with us? Yeah, um, so I, I know you was going to ask me this question and I was thinking about which one pro um, project really stands out, but I really do think um, working on so many different types of events and projects has led me to the position that I'm doing now. So um, we, we talked a bit that I was a stage manager. I've also worked as a venue technician and I've learned um, a lot of different skills there. Obviously, how to be a lighting technician and designer, how to mix live sound, how to work you know with artists as well because as a technician usually you're the first person to meet the company and also how theatre runs and their box office so that role at Square Chapel in Halifax really did um, teach me a lot give me a good foundation for how the industry works and you know the technical side and also front of house um, and then obviously we had the pandemic and there was there was no uh, and games for a few years yes um and so, then so, yeah yes yeah, so, so you, you made a very good point there about your your skill set you said you you did lighting and you also did sound mixing was that correct yeah now was that part of the course no it, it was it wasn't no right um, so so in terms of your you, you as a stage manager now would you say that most stage managers would have that skill set that you have or will they have um, a, a lesser skill set in terms of not being able to do sound mixing and lighting? Um, I think, you know, the Royal Stage Minder, I've already said, can, can mean a lot of different things. But I, uh, yeah, I certainly didn't learn them on my degree course. Um, on, on my first tour that I mentioned out of university, um, I quickly learned that um, a stage manager on a small budget means a lot of different jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so that meant learning how to, you know, uh, cue a show um, yourself, uh, how to um, relight a show, which basically means you know, the, the lighting designer has designed how the show should look. And each venue that you go to, it would be my job to make sure it looks exactly the same or as near as what the designer had intended. And um, so that means, uh, you know, running the lighting board, running the sound cues, so, um, yeah, I would say that um, if, if you are doing a stage management course and, and you are wanting to do touring theatre, you often have to start off in a smaller theatre company, but that also probably means you have to quickly learn how to do a lot of different jobs. Right. And that's that's really good in terms of where, where you are now. So your employability skills must be quite 
Hi, people, people want you, would you say? <laughs> when you look at a job and you think to yourself, I can do that job, do you think there must be a certain amount of pride in your ability? I guess I, guess I have more options of jobs because I can do so many things. Yes. So, so, so that leads me back to the course, because obviously students go to university because they want to more or less want, want to be employed in a particular area that they've studied in. That's not always the case, because like you said, transferable skills can take you elsewhere. So if you were to look back on the course now and say to yourself, right, I've, I've been out of university four or five years, I've had a number of different roles, I've acquired skills that I didn't necessarily get while I was on the course, but probably because you were so proactive prior to arriving on the course, and since you left, you've been able to develop more. So what would you say to somebody who was looking at designing a course in stage management now? What would have some of the key modules or titles of things that they should teach on a stage management course? Um, I think the basics in all of the areas, uh, technical areas, so knowing how to use a, a lighting desk and how to use queuing systems, maybe such as QLab, which is predominantly for sound cues for, for Mac computers, or SES, which is a sound cue system for PC users. Um, I would say basics of um, maybe even projection as well would, would be beneficial. Um, but I think getting out there and, and trying it um, outside of the course is um, just as important as stuff on the course. But sometimes with your peers, maybe in, in class, they say, oh, have a go on the lighting desk. You don't really know what to do. You might sort of think, oh, I don't want to look stupid or whatever. But if you're, you know, outside of, of university and someone from a theatre is showing you one on one how to use the equipment, then then that's felt different for me, for me at least. OK, so I'd like to bring us um, to our penultimate question. Um, if you were to give an advice to a current cohort of students who are on a live production stroke stage management course, performance course, but particularly around like your area, what would you tell them now that they need to continue with to really make themselves employable? I think um, for me, what, what really helped was getting out there and trying lots of different jobs. I still do lots of different jobs, but um, trying them and see which one you think you might want to stay with. Um, yeah, I've worked, I've worked on weddings, I've worked on festivals, I've worked on theatre shows, dance shows, um, you know, book launches, things like that. So it really is good to, to learn how all these different types of events works and, and don't be don't be um scared to apply for jobs that you think that you might not be able to do um because more more times than not you'll probably get to the job and think oh, i don't know why I, I thought i couldn't do this job yeah um, so, so definitely just put yourself out there and have a try <laughs> excellent thank you for that so i lead into my last question so what does the future hold for you daniel where do you see yourself in the next I know people always say it is because you, it's, and, it, and you may not be able to say that, or you may have a clear idea of where you want to be. But do you have a clear idea where you want to be in the next five years? Um, well, now I work predominantly front of house and as a um, event planner. But I'd, I really would like to. Um, I really like sports. Obviously, it was a big part of my life. I'd really like to get into sports events management. I think or more corporate event planning such as big conferences um, so that's what I would like to tackle next I think. I'd like to say thank you to Danielle and thank for her you. time and also to for those of you listening if you'd like to hear any more of these podcasts there are uh, quite a number of them already available on our Spotify as well as available on our webpage, International Institute of Live Events. So I say thank you to myself and also thank you to Danielle for today's podcast. Thank you for having me.